Okay, then let's look at the second process that we're going to discuss on manufacturing of ceramic metric composites in this unit. So that is the liquid silicon infiltration process. So by the name of the process, you can understand the nature of the process actually. So it's liquid silicon involved and also you want to infiltrate liquid silicon uh, into the reinforcement actually. So therefore, so uh, this process uh, should be related with the uh, capillary reaction actually. This infiltration should take place uh, the, with the effects of or the, with the aid of the capillary reactions uh, that we discussed in the previous uh, the lecture. So if you remember, I discussed uh, the capillary reaction, uh, how it works and the, the important parameters as I discussed uh, the, on the macro and micro flow in uh, the RTM process. Uh, for manufacturing of polymetric composites. So therefore that knowledge should be important here. Right, so then let's look at how we can just uh, the manufacture a composite material using liquid silicon infiltration process. So this is also one of the important techniques that we can use to manufacture ceramic metric composites actually. If you think about the concept behind the liquid silicon infiltration process, it is a type of reactive melt infiltration technique in which the ceramic matrix uh, forms as a result of chemical interaction between the liquid metal infiltrated into a porous reinforcing preform and the substance surrounding the melt. So the idea here is that we use liquid silicon and then that silicon can infiltrate into the preform or into the reinforcement and here the capital reaction uh, should support uh, for that process actually. So if you remember we discussed before about the capital reaction and the important parameters for that process so capillary reaction depends on the, the uh, radius of the pores, the surface tension of the liquid, uh, and then the compatibility between the, the reinforcement and the, the resin material and so on. So we discuss how these parameters can influence the infiltration process. And if you match those parameters properly, so then we could have a, a proper wettability of the reinforcement by the resin material actually. In this process also, uh, the capillary reaction plays an important role in wetting the fibers to avoid or to minimize the possible porosities actually. This process also controlling the temperature or the conditions uh, is really important actually. In particular, the temperature we have to maintain in a certain value uh, to maintain the viscosity of the silicon material. This, ideally, so we have to maintain the temperature of this process at a temperature which should be higher than the 1400 degrees Celsius. So that is mainly because of the melting temperature of the uh, silicon is 1,414 degrees Celsius. So then we have to maintain or the run the process above this temperature. Otherwise the silicon material may not be viscous enough to infiltrate properly into the, the fiber pre -prom actually. As I mentioned before here, the liquid silicon melts and the carbon surface infiltrates via capillary reaction actually. So then with the molten silicon infiltrates uh, we are the capillary reactions to the preform here, and then the liquid silicon uh, the reacts with the carbon forming silicon carbide. So then here also we just use some sort of reaction uh, to form the matrix material, the molten silicon, uh, the react with the carbon, and then it will it will cause to produce the silicon carbide matrix on top of the uh, reinforcement or the fibrous structure actually. So here you can see the arrangement of the process actually. So then we can use uh, the polymer impregnated fibers as a starting uh, the fibrous preform, and then we can just uh, the achieve the, the pyloresis process at uh, between 800 to 1200 degrees. So then uh, the, we can just produce uh, the carbon matrix composite here, right? So then you could see the, the arrangement now here. So then we, we use the pyloresis process at some elevated temperature or between some certain temperatures. So then we can produce the carbon matrix composite. So here the idea is that the carbon should be there to uh, react with the uh, liquid silicon to produce the silicon carbide. After that, we can place the carbon matrix composite structure or the pre -poem, so which is pre-prepared based on the conditions. So then we just place that uh, in, inside the liquid, uh, the silicon, uh, the container, and then uh, due to the capillary reaction, so then uh, the silicon uh, can uh, the, the infiltrate into the, the fibrous pre -poem, and and then at the same time, a reaction should take place uh, to form the silicon carbide. The liquid silicon reacts with the carbon within the structure and then after that it will form the silicon carbide matrix and then we can get the final product here. Okay, so then if you look into the reaction now you could see the liquid silicon plus the solid carbon will produce silicon carbide. Okay, so that is the matrix material that we are interested in here. So we have to control the condition during this reaction uh, to get the, the, proper, uh, the properties from the silicon carbide, the matrix composites actually. 
So then I mentioned before the capillary reaction is the tendency of a liquid within the capillary tube or absorbent material to fall or rise as a result of surface tension, right? So the, the driving pressure uh, is generated by the surface tension of the liquid. So in here, the surface tension of the silicon material. And also apart from that, uh, the, the, uh, the radius of the, the pores uh, within the structure is important. Also the contact angle between the, the molten, uh, the silicon, uh, the matrix and uh, the, the reinforcement is also important to achieve the proper wetting. If you remember, so it's smaller the contact angle, better the wetting it should be, right? So then these are the conditions we have to control. And also the temperature is important to maintain the viscosity. So then if you control all of these uh, the parameters uh, properly, so then we can have a proper wetting and then uh, can have a silicon uh, uh, carbide matrix composite, uh, but with the less uh, porosity. Uh, however, so if you don't control it properly, so there could be some level of porosity uh, during this process as well. So this is the basic idea behind the process. Hope you understand now. So this also involves a type of reaction, but it is not as complicated as the uh, CVI process that we discussed before. But uh, here we have to form the reaction uh, to react uh, the liquid silicon with uh, the carbon, and then uh, it will form the silicon carbide matrix uh, within the, uh, the, the uh, pre-prepared, uh, the carbon matrix composite structure to turn into a, uh, the a ceramic matrix composite structure, which is uh, having the silicon carbide matrix actually. Hope it is clear. Okay, then let's try to understand the advantages and disadvantages of this process. So here you could see that it could be low cost. So this is compared to the other process, okay? So compared to the CVI process, this could be low cost. So that's what I mean here, right? So the, however, if you try to compare with other type of composites, for example, some uh, the polymetric composite production, so this could be costly actually. So because this involves high temperatures above 1000 degrees, so therefore we have to have the facilities for that. So therefore this process could be expensive compared to the other type of uh, the, the composite material, but compared to some other, uh, the ceramic metric composite processes like uh, CVI process, so this could be a kind of low cost uh, process actually. The short production time, so again, so you have to understand this, uh, what I mean here. So depending on the size of the component and depending on the, the, the infiltration rate, so it could take some certain of time, but if you remember for the CVI process, it could take a weeks, okay? So, but this process, so it could be relatively uh, the, the uh, faster than the some of the other processes like CVI. So then uh, the very low residual porosity. So if you try to match the condition properly, so then we can just have a low level of porosity here. So, but it is really important to control the conditions uh, such as uh, the, the viscosity, that means the temperature, and then the, the uh, fiber and the resin contact angle, those, those kind of things should be controlled properly. So in that case, we can have a, uh, the porosity at a minimum level, but, but there could be some level of porosity if we don't do the process well, okay? So then complex and near net shapes. So we can go for complicated geometries. So given that the capillary reaction can allow the infiltration of the liquid silicon or the molten silicon into the structure. Okay, so given that, so we can go into some kind of complicated uh, the structures or geometries, but you have to understand the, how complicated it could be. Okay, if you just go into very complicated structures, infiltration process might not be good enough. Okay, so then by experience, you have to understand. So this is the complexity that I can go for. Okay, and also we can have some near net shape component. So that means this component should be quite the final product that you're going to have. So there'll be no or less amount of uh, the finishing stages uh, in this process actually. So that is an advantage. So then we can get the final product almost. There could be very minor level of uh, the final finishing stages uh, with LSI process. So that is an advantage. And also they can have good thermal and electrical conductivities. So here we have uh, the silicon and the carbon matrix. So then silicon carbide, depending on the fiber volume fraction that you use, we could just control the electrical uh, and thermal conductivities of this particular composite material. Okay, so therefore uh, we can just control the functional properties such as thermal conductivity and electrical conductivity. But here you have to understand there are some limits actually. Okay? You have to understand that there is a maximum threshold amount of the, the, the fiber volume fraction that we can use in these type of structures. So depending on that, we can achieve some certain level of uh, the good uh, the thermal and electrical conductivities. So those could be really useful in some applications. So those are the kind of main advantages of this process. 
And then if you look into some of the disadvantages, so any process could have advantages and also disadvantages. So therefore, depending on the requirement uh, and depending on the budget and depending on the functional properties required. So we had to select the suitable process to manufacture the composite material. Right. Okay. Then if you look into some of the possible disadvantages of this process, so uh, this process could have some issues with the high temperature, so it might damage uh, the fibers actually. For example, now I mentioned it before, uh, this process should run above 1400 degrees due to the, the uh, melting point of the, the silicon material. So then uh, this might just create some issues with the fibers uh, uh, if it, it might burn out or just damage the fibers. Uh, up to some level, but uh, so then you have to uh, select suitable the fibers uh, depending on the conditions that we use. Ideally, some fibers that can just withstand in uh, high temperatures actually. And also another problem that could cause in this process is that the residual silicon uh, could be in the carbide matrix. Okay, so then that is also could be a problem in this process and a type of disadvantage. And also depending on how good you do this process, uh, so there could be some issues with the mechanical properties. So as I mentioned before, if we do it well, so then we can have low level of porosity and then we could get uh, the good, uh, the mechanical properties or the other functional properties that you need. But however, so if you could not do the process well, uh, so then you will get some poor properties from the composite that you're going to manufacture. So therefore controlling conditions, experience, and these are really important in these type of processes if you want to get uh, this required properties from the, the composite material that you're going to manufacture. Okay, so these are the type of uh, the, the advantages and disadvantages of this process. So, but if you want to have a ceramic metric composite with some sort of a good level of thermal and electrical conductivities, uh, the liquid silicon infiltration process might be one of the best uh, choice if you can uh, use it uh, within your uh, facilities actually. So liquid silicon infiltration process uh, can be used to manufacture ceramic metric composites for different type of applications. Uh, and uh, one of the common application uh, for this process uh, would be the, uh, the brake disc for the high performance cars. In normal cars, in normal passenger cars, the brake discs are mostly manufactured using uh, the cast iron, using the casting process. But this could be heavier and then also it could easily wear out due to the nature of the, the cast iron material. So, but if you use this uh, process, uh, the liquid silicon infiltration process to manufacture uh, the, the uh, brake disc for the high performance cars, they could be lightweight and also they could be uh, the having a, a long lifetime with the low level of wear and tear. So uh, it could be really having a good performance uh, for the brake disc. Therefore, some of the high performance car manufacturers use uh, liquid silicon infiltration to manufacture uh, the brake disc of their high performance cars actually. Here I have listed the possible steps of manufacturing brake disc using uh, the liquid silicon infiltration process. Okay, so then we can just start with some sort of resin material, which is suitable resin material, and then mix it with some carbon fiber. Okay, so then that is the starting process. So after that, so then we know that here the, the, uh, the, uh, the carbon fiber could be in the short form. So therefore short carbon fiber we use for this particular application. So it could be a powder form mostly, uh, very small uh, the, the uh, particles uh, or otherwise. So therefore we have to mix the resin material and carbon fiber. So both could be in the powder form actually. Okay, so then we mix them properly and then we want to shape it, right? So then the powder form materials, both of them. So then we want to shape it. Uh, so this shaping process should take place about 100 degrees. Okay, so we want to shape it into the desired shape. Okay, so once we shape it, so normally it's a powder form material, it is not compressed or it's not consolidated into the proper level. So then after that, we have to apply some sort of uh, the high pressure. Okay, so then we can consolidate into the desired shape to get the desired density uh, of the brake disc actually. So after consolidating, we can just carry out the pyrolysis process. So which should be again carried out at high temperatures. Ideally, it should be uh, higher than 700 degrees or so. Okay, so this depends on the type of the resin material uh, and then the uh, other condition that we use during the process. Okay, so then we use high temperatures and then we get the pyrolysis process. And, uh, after completing this process uh, by maintaining the condition, so then we can have a kind of the proper, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the carbon matrix composite material. Uh, so uh, it could be ready for the next stage actually. So then now we started with the, the, uh, the resin and carbon fiber mixture. So then we shape it up, consolidated it, and then uh, we carry out the pyrolysis process. So then it is a kind of uh, the solid structure, uh, which is having the shape of the brake disc that we own. 
Okay, after the pyrolysis process, so then we have the solid structure. So there could be some kind of uh, the uh, finishing stages or machining or drilling holes or some sort of things could be done. Okay, so depending on the requirement, so then we do the machining process. Uh, so we just try to get the holes or uh, cutting out or shaping out the edges and so on. We can carry out the required uh, the machining stages after this process. After the machining process, the carbon matrix, uh, the, the break this is ready to go into the next stage uh, to infiltrate with the silicon matrix actually. So, so that means we use uh, the liquid silicon or the molten silicon and then we just uh, put that break this uh, into the, the liquid, uh, the silicon or the molten silicon at control temperatures, ideally about 1400 degrees, 1500 degrees above. And then uh, the liquid silicon or the molten silicon react with the carbon material and then uh, it will just create the silicon carbide matrix. So ideally we should have this, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the uh, break this with the silicon carbide matrix, which is a, a ceramic matrix composite material. Okay, so, so after completing the, the infiltration process, so then we have to cure it properly and then uh, the break disc is ready. So after, after taking the, the break disc from this process or the, this stage, so it is a, a ceramic matrix composite which is having the silicon carbide matrix or the liquid silicon infiltrated into the uh, carbon matrix. So then uh, it has uh, generated uh, the silicon carbide matrix uh, within the structure. Okay, uh, this will provide a lightweight, uh, strong, uh, the structure, so which can just uh, the uh, support uh, uh, properly the breaking of the high performance cars in a much better way and also providing a longer lifetime compared to the normal cast time, uh, the brace disc actually. Finally, the product will get into the, the final stages of uh, the, the production. So that means you finish it off, the grind it off, the unnecessary parts, and then uh, the again, clear out the holes and things, and then it is ready to be used in a high performance car. Okay, so then you hope you understand the process now. So we start with the powder foam here for both resin and carbon, and then we mix them properly. And then after that, we shape it up uh, to the desired, uh, the shape thickness and so on. So then we can have the shape of the breast disc so, and then consolidate because both of them are in the, the powder foam uh, or the particulate foam. So then we have to consolidate it and then go to the pyrolysis process. So then we can have the, uh, the carbon matrix composites. So then getting into the machining process, so you get uh, the desired, uh, the cuttings and machining done at this stage. So after that, it will undergo this, uh, the liquid silicon infiltration process to, uh, to uh, form the silicon carbide matrix within the structure. So then uh, after completing that, uh, the curing will take place. And after the curing, it will be ready for the final stages or the grinding or whatever the final stages. Uh, then we'll get a ceramic matrix based, uh, the brake disc that can be used in high performance cars. Okay, hope it is clear. So then if some of you don't know the pyrolysis process, please just read around it. But in basic terms, you could say that the pyrolysis is a thermal decomposition of a materials at elevated temperatures, usually in an inert atmosphere. Okay, so this is what it means, the pyrolysis process, but uh, we can just explain it in uh, thermodynamics in a kind of broad way, but I would like you to read around if you want to understand exactly what it means and then how this process works. So, but you can understand here, yeah, it's a kind of decomposition of the materials at elevated temperatures uh, we normally use uh, the uh, some of the inert atmospheres so because we don't want to have any other extra reactions okay so that is why if you use some reactive gases there could be extra reactions which we don't want likewise we just discuss in the cvi process so during the process we want to happen only some certain reaction if you use some certain reactive gases it could create some extra reactions and causing some problems so that is why we carried out these processes using some inert conditions Okay, so then there will be no extra reactions to disturb the process that you want to do. Right here, there's a nice video to explain the procedure of manufacturing brake disc using uh, the liquid silicon infiltration process. If you want to watch this video on YouTube, so here is the link. High performance cars typically have ceramic composite brake discs rather than regular cast iron ones. That kind of power on wheels requires being lightweight, and cast iron is very heavy. It would also wear out too quickly due to the intense heat friction generates when you brake a car with such a powerful engine. Ceramic is heat resistant, up to 1830 degrees Fahrenheit. Therefore, these ceramic composite brake discs last about 60 times longer than standard cast iron discs. Ceramic composite means the ceramic material. Silicon is combined with carbon fiber for strength. 
The disc factory prepares the carbon fiber by mixing two ingredients, a heat molded resin and chopped pieces of raw carbon fiber, the strength of which lies in the interweaving of its minuscule carbon filaments. Automated machines pour the carbon fiber into aluminum molds in the shape of the disc ring. The first filling station fills the mold cavity only halfway. Workers then fit a slotted belt around the mold and insert aluminum cores into the slots. These cores will form a ventilation channel in the disc ring to keep the disc from overheating. Now the mold moves on to the next filling station. It fills the remainder of the cavity with carbon fiber. A roller levels the top. Then workers close up the mold and a small press pushes down the cover to lightly compact the contents. The mold enters a large press which applies 20 tons of pressure while heating to almost 400 degrees Fahrenheit. This compacts the carbon fiber and transforms the resin powder into plastic. Once the mold is cooled down enough to be handled, workers submerge it in cold water for five to eight minutes. This cools the disc ring completely, enabling them to pull out the cores. A computer-guided laser then examines the mold to make sure every last core has been removed. When they get the all clear, they open the top and bottom sections of the mold and extract the disc ring. Computer-guided machines then smooth out the rough areas and drill tiny ventilation holes. They put the disc ring into an oven, which over the course of two days, gradually heats it to just over 1800 degrees Fahrenheit. This causes a chemical change, which transforms the plastic into carbon. Next, they take a crucible, a high heat resistant container, and position five mounts inside. They place the disc ring on the mounts. Then in the middle, a funnel into which they pour a ceramic material, a fine silicon powder. Then they load the crucible into an oven for 24 hours. It gradually heats the disc ring to more than 3000 degrees Fahrenheit, melting the silicon. Then it applies low level suction, drawing the now liquid silicon into the disc ring. This creates an exceptionally hard new material called silicon carbide. After a computer guided drill bores mounting holes, the disc ring goes into a chamber where it receives a coat of protective paint. The paint shields the carbon in the disc ring from oxygen, which is critical because at high heat, oxygen burns carbon. This anti-oxidation treatment significantly extends the life of the brake disc. The paint is cured in an oven, leaving behind a white residue. A robot sands it off, then polishes the entire disc ring surface. Here's what the finished disc ring looks like before it's cleaned and polished. And after. Every single brake disc ring undergoes a meticulous inspection. This sophisticated machine takes thousands of high definition photographs of the surface, which a computer then analyzes in micron level detail. To complete the brake disc, they affix the bell, a circular component in the middle which connects the brake disc to the vehicle. The bell is made of either aluminum or stainless steel and bolted into the mounting holes in the disc ring. I think it was a really nice demonstration and then you could understand how we can manufacture a ceramic matrix based uh, the uh, brake disc uh, for high performance car applications actually. So here you could uh, the recognize maybe, so there are several uh, the processes uh, they use uh, to get the required conditions during the practical applications. For example, so then they apply some protective layers and also they do some heat treatment. And likewise, the number of uh, the other things takes place uh, the, apart from the basic manufacturing actually. So all of these, uh, the conditions or the treatments should be required 
to maintain the proper functionality of the brain this over the product uh, in practical applications so we don't want to have any failures actually and also you might have noticed that so these manufacturers use some high tech measuring or inspection devices uh, to inspect the the products for uh, possible inaccuracies or possible defects and so on this is also really important we have to make sure that the product that we made is into the desired standards or desired dimensions so otherwise it could create some issues during the use okay. and apart from that they should have used uh, the cad or computational fluid dynamics software packages to analyze the design and also to validate uh, the the performance stress conditions and so on so during the manufacturing so it is in industry it is not only about the the manufacturing of the component using liquid silicon infiltration or any other manufacturing technique it is about the design of the component which should involve some sort of uh, the cad software packages uh, the cfd software packages and several other analytical tools actually so once they analyze the design then uh, they just uh, the recognize so this is the most suitable design uh, depending on the geometries that they need so after that so it will go to the the production stage so after the production and even during the production they just observe the the uh, product uh, to make sure that everything is going well eventually after completing the product also they just uh, test it uh, for possible defects and also possible inaccuracies of the dimensions and so on okay so then uh, this is how uh, we just uh, the the uh, manufacture some products so therefore you have to understand that it is not only about uh, you have to understand the processing behavior of manufacturing something so you have to understand from uh, the uh, the a to z of the manufacturing process so it it, it might involve several other testing design uh, and inspection stages in industry so when you manufacture some particular object okay hope it was clear and then in the lecture slide so we have several other processes uh, to manufacture uh, the ceramic matrix composites the sum of them are uh, pip polymer infiltration and pyrolysis and the csi ceramic solid infiltration the demox direct metal oxidization processes so most of these processes are really involved in uh, the several stages and hope uh, you can just uh, study them uh, based on the content provided and also you can read around these processes to expand your knowledge so then i'm going to look into the, the sintering process so which is one of the most important uh, the the processes uh, that we normally follow or use during the manufacturing of ceramic components or ceramic matrix composite component as well okay whatever the process uh, that we just uh, the use with ceramic material the sintering is really important process uh, to control or to minimize the porosity of the ice structures okay so uh, then uh, i'm going to look at that process how are we going to uh, the use that process and then how we can control the porosity of uh, the ceramic uh, the materials or ceramic based uh, structures actually